That's a good, strong voice. <laughs> As Pastor Sarah mentioned, this is where it all began, this series that we've been talking about with Abraham. And I want to give you a sense of, of where, literally where, this all began. That's the best map I could find, I'm sorry. But if you look, imagine sort of modern-day Israel, way down near the bottom where you see that inland sea, Bethel and I are right down to the west of that. All right? So they're way down there. Now eventually they'll travel, but that's where we're talking about, down in that direction. We have a thing in our modern society about these blessings and curses. Right? We, we use these words a lot. We say, oh, have a blessed day, for instance. Or, you know, oh, it was such a blessing that something happened. Or on the other side, we use a curse word. <laughs> you can just imagine one. I'm not going to share one with you today. But let me give you an image of, of these, some of these blessings and curses. Here's one. <laughs> right? We, that's how we think sometimes that God, God, that God works, right? Behave or else, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you're going to get cursed with something, whether that's a rush hour or or some kind of problem at home, or you're going to lose your job, or whatever that might be, this is very often how we think that the whole thing works. Right? So one that might be a little bit more familiar to you is this next one. Right? Who killed my sister? <laughs> Was it you? Right? We think about not just God, but we think about people cursing us, right? Or blessing us, right? We think about the way in which people want to build us up or tear us down. Let me tell you a little story about blessings and curses. Yesterday, we were at the airport in Minneapolis. And airports, as we probably all know, are very kind of nervous and tense places these days, right? Nothing, I don't know if they were, they were ever really pleasant, but these days there's just an energy in them that, that makes people on edge. So we were there, and you know, parking was actually pretty easy and cheap, by the way. But it, you know, that was really easy, and, and so we, we get into the terminal and not sure where we're supposed to go, but a woman approaches us and says, oh, are you here to pick up an unaccompanied minor? And I said, yes, one specific one. <laughs> I just want to take anyone home. <laughs> so I said, yes, where do we go? And she said, oh, she was very nice. I felt blessed. Right? She was very nice. And she said, oh, you've got to go back upstairs to the, to the gate. So I stood there for a while, and I was at the special services gate. Which, or, or desk, which already says this is going to be a while. And uh, that was true. There were people, I was you know, in the line, and it took a while. Because, because when you talk about special services, these aren't people who are expecting to sort of breeze through. These are people who have an issue, right? So I saw this one family, and they were, I think maybe it was Spanish, I wasn't sure, but they were speaking to each other, and, and you could tell it was uncomfortable, and it was a teenage son, so it was additionally uncomfortable. And they're, you know, they're talking and everything, and I'm behind them. And so I finally get to the front of the line, and the, the, the mom, by this time the dad and the son had kind of ditched because they had to get back in line. So the mom says, can I, get, can I go in front of you? Because right, they were kind of mid-transaction. And I kind of looked at her and I said, well, okay. You know? And she said, well, no, no, that's okay, that's okay. She said, well, we don't want to go to that agent. <laughs> and I said, why not? And the mom said, you know, in the hushed tone, she's mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, great, I'll take her. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I, you know, I get up and I had to present my ID and prove that I'm Lauren's dad and you know, do all that stuff, which is fine. I mean, I'm glad they do that stuff. Uh, but I presented my ID and she's, you know, she's looking at it and she's typing away and she's looking at it and typing it away and looking at me because I didn't have glasses in the picture, you know, vanity. And <laughs> so she hands me this little ticket that says, you know, anyways, so I go to security. So now I'm feeling like doubly blessed, right? She got me through relatively quickly, not a problem. So I get to security and I hand the nice man the, at the podium my, my little pass there and my ID and he looks at me and he looks down at the ID and he looks at me and he says, the names are different. Huh? Well, instead of a D in my last name, it's an S. Breslau. Which is a city in Poland. <laughs> but we weren't there. Breslau. And, and I, I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, you can't go through security. You know, my daughter's just on the other side of security. Well, you can't go through security. Now I'm not feeling blessed. I'm feeling a bit cursed. So he says, and this is when my knees got a little weak, he said, let me call a supervisor. Oh, boy. So he calls the supervisor. And the supervisor comes over, and he, he says, he looks, and he looks, you know, this again kind of thing. And he says, just go. <laughs> okay. So I just went and went through. Now I'm feeling blessed again, right? The name thing got settled, and now I'm feeling blessed again. I'm not feeling cursed anymore, and that's good. And then I have to, of course, take off my shoes, take off my belt, unload everything I had, and then I go to the machine. <laughs> now I'm not feeling blessed anymore. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even feeling clothed anymore. <laughs> because, you know, it's that machine. And I got finally to the gate and got the biggest hug from my daughter that I have ever gotten. I was blessed. <laughs> and that's how we think about blessings and curses, right? Mostly we don't think about blessings and curses as huge things, right? Mostly we think about it as the little things in our day, right? That go well, that go poorly, that go well, that go poorly, and we think, I'm blessed, I'm cursed, I'm blessed, I'm cursed, and you're exhausted by the end of the day. But that's not what it means in this lesson. <laughs> All that build up. <laughs> because you see, God isn't saying to Abram and Sarai, you're special, you're going to get good stuff, and all those other people who aren't you are going to get awful stuff. Instead, God is saying something far more important. And that is, he's saying, Abram, I've chosen you because I think you can do this. I think, you're, I think you can handle this. I think you can manage what I've got ahead. I think you can do well, and Sarai, to inherit the land that I'm going to give you. So my blessing is not, you're special and great. My blessing is, I trust you. And then when you encounter other people who you feel like are on the right track, you know, you bless them too, not say you're special and God likes you more than anybody else. But God says, I'm putting you in a position to look into the whole community and discern whether or not folks are really hearing my word or not. And so you bless them by saying, eh, pat on the back, good job. And when you curse them, you're not saying, you're going to hell. You say something far more important and true. And that is, look, you've gotten off on the wrong path. You're going in the wrong direction. That's all that the curse and the blessing was in this passage. It was not some kind of cosmic, mythological, huge thing. God is just saying to Abram and Sarah, discern right, discern wrong. When you find those who are going in the right direction, Give them some, 
some strokes. <laughs> when you find people who are going in the wrong direction, push them back into the right path. That's not God. But a lot of people think it is. And we have an opportunity this week in VBS to teach our children over and over and over again that God is not some specter, not some wicked witch waiting around the corner for you to fail. Instead, we exist, you keep picture in your mind, close your eyes, picture in your mind your favorite snow globe. <laughs> right? Stuff goes on inside that snow globe. Might be a little scene, might be a little person, whatever it is. We exist in a state of grace because of Jesus Christ. We exist inside that, that bubble, if you will, of God's love, of God's care, of God's forgiveness. That doesn't go away. Now, sometimes inside the snow globe, we fail, we screw up, <laughs> we, you know, we make mistakes, and sometimes we do great things, we do wonderful things, we, 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 you know, we impress people, but it all goes on inside of that state of grace. There's no grace here. But there's grace here and grace at that font. And that's what we do for our Vacation Bible School kids this week. We teach them that the blessings and curses of life are not God shaming them, but they just happen. And that's why we're here together to celebrate the blessings and to get through the curses together. I prefer this next one here. <laughs> I prefer that one. <laughs> right? Because let's face it, if there's curses, we'll get through it. But God says, it ain't about me. Use your own name. <laughs> Amen.